All right guys, welcome to another video from XF Motorsports. This is gonna be part three of Project XF1. In part one of this video series, we started off with a Mercedes S500, took the engine out of it, took it apart completely. Then in part two, we made these really cool F1 style pistons for it so that we can get the most power out of this engine, rev it really high up. And now in this part, we're gonna be making a dry sump system for it so that we can actually, well, run it reliably at higher power levels and at higher RPM. Uh, and Matt is gonna explain well, some of the benefits of going with the dry sump system. Yeah, so most cars typically have a wet sump system, which means oil stored at the bottom of the engine in a collector like this, and sucked up through a essentially one stage that then cycles it to the engine. The issue with that is now you have a lot of oil sitting at the bottom of the engine, which means it will move around as the car moves. So when you're on the track, uh, the oil will essentially move to different parts of it and may not go in, into the uh, collector which leads to air coming in, a loss of engine pressure and you may not have the reliable performance that you need. So there's lots of benefits that uh, come with the dry sump and that's uh, the design that we're, we're going to run. Yep. Uh, so for making uh, the dry sump on this engine what we're doing is that, well usually for most dry sumps uh, people what they do is they go with an external pump mounted outside the engine, it's belt driven usually uh, just because it's easier to put it in that way and customize things but since we have the engine apart and uh, since we want to make like a system that is fully internal we're gonna uh, just take this back part of the pump off we're gonna be using a longer shaft on it we're gonna be changing the shafts that are running through the pump basically we're gonna modify the pump in a way that uh, we're gonna add multiple scavenging stages at the back of the same pump uh, but still relying on the same main stage and the same chain drive that drives this pump so we're gonna keep the reliability of the uh, factory pump and the whole mechanism because of course that's a proven really reliable thing and we're just going to be adding our own scavenging stages to it which are going to scavenge the oil from the bottom of the engine send it to an external tank that is going to store the oil and that external tank is then going to flow oil back to the uh, main stage of the pump which is then going to flow oil to the uh, engine so this is the design that we've actually come up with for making the uh, dry sump pump. So basically what this is, is this whole part that we're going to be making ourselves is going to bolt straight at the back of the existing oil pump that is uh, for the S500. And the shafts that are running the two gears right now, we're going to make longer shafts that are going to go all the way through this pump and they are going to drive the... Um, three scavenging stages that are going link, to be linked over here and the three scavenging stages what they're going to do is they're going to suck the oil pan dry they're going to remove all the oil in the oil pan they're going to feed all that oil to an external tank that is going to be mounted outside the engine and then that external tank is going to flow oil to this inlet and this inlet is going to flow oil to the main S500 oil pump that is going to be mounted over here and then that oil pump is going to supply oil to the entire engine. The gears that we're going to be using for this dry sump are going to be these ones. These are gears that I made in a previous video um, that uh, were meant for an E55 to replace the gears and the scavenging gears in that one so that basically the gears make less noise and uh, showing you guys how these ones move. And this is how these gears move together. The really cool thing about these ones is that they actually don't make contact with each other. They're spinning on two shafts that are already linked and spinning at like constant speeds and they always keep a certain clearance in between them so that fluid can't really flow in between them but the gears aren't really hitting each other that's why they don't really wear out and they pretty much last for a really long time but the only difference between the gears we're making for this pump and the gears we made for the E55 is going to be that these ones are actually going to be um, not press fit onto the shafts so they're going to have this little bit of a cut on it and the shaft is also going to be shaped like this so that these gears can basically be uh, slid on and off easily so that the pump is easier to assemble and disassemble. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for the design. Let's actually get to making all these parts now and then see how they function. So now getting to actually making the oil pump, we're starting off with blocks of aluminum like these. Um, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use a trick called um, the super glue technique. It's something that I actually saw on YouTube and um, I thought that it wouldn't work because I thought the piece would fly off, of course, if it's super glued together. But I actually tried it myself on another piece sometime before and it actually worked really well and got gave really nice results. And actually, um, that way you don't need to make any fixture or anything to hold the part to the machine. So. Uh, basically what it is is that we've actually made this uh, part which is like a thing that already fits into the vise perfectly and we're gonna add some super glue on this surface and then this surface is already also faced so we're gonna add some super glue on this one and basically super glue these two pieces together um, then i'm gonna machine this part only from one side 
and I'm going to go all the way down till there's literally nothing left on this part. Um, and then, yeah, that will basically be my part. So basically, I'll be able to make the whole housing in just one machining operation using this trick, which is, well, one machining and one facing operation. So uh, it's still going to be much quicker than using it the regular ways of uh, fixturing the part and everything. So uh, let's give it a try uh, and see how it goes. Here's a look at the part after it's done and it's so cool to see that this whole thing was done in just two steps of machining. Just one facing operation at the back then super gluing it onto this piece and then yep machining all the rest from the top end. Um, literally the end mill cut all the way through this surface but it didn't even leave a mark on like this bottom part. It did leave some marks for this one because I guess I didn't have all my tools calibrated well enough so two of the tools actually did go below that point and um, left these marks but you can't even feel these marks they're just on the surface you see them but you don't even feel them but um, actually if I had my tools all my tools calibrated well enough it should have all been machined without even leaving a mark on this bottom plate so here's how it all goes together I'm actually testing these ones right now with the Mercedes gears because well my gears were also designed to fit the Mercedes pump so you can yeah, well these gears will fit this pump and those gears will fit that pump and yeah it all spins freely everything has its proper clearance and everything so um, it's all looking pretty good next what I need to do is I need to well make a few more of these stages for um, all the rest of the parts of the pump that need to be bolted together and then after that I will need to make the shafts the gears and then start putting all this stuff together <laughs> Alright guys, so we have just finished machining the parts for the dry sump. So first we have uh, this one, which bolts right onto the piece from the engine already. It goes on like this, enough for the uh, gear shafts to come right through, as well as the uh, oil inlet. We have our first scavenging stage, which bolts on directly like that. Second one, just as the same. And third one, like this. So. Right now, we're going to move on to uh, machining out the gears to uh, go inside the scavenging stages.
just finished making the gears for the uh, dry sum and if we take a look at some of them they turned out great they're well within the uh, tolerances that we need if we take a look at the uh, end stage right here they fit really well they'll uh, have no issues uh, spinning around obviously the tolerance is uh, are a little bit close but once we finish them in acetone remove the super glue from how we were finishing them they're going to spin no problem and once we put the uh, shafts in we'll be able to test it and actually see this thing working yep and now the next step well the only step left for this pump is actually making the shafts which uh, all these gears are going to mount on and of course that is a little bit of a difficult task because those shafts are made of like a really strong really difficult to machine steel and yeah we're just going to have to machine a slot into them so that the gears can go on and then after that it's just going to be a matter of putting this whole pump together. Alright guys, it's a brand new day. We've just finished machining out the shafts for the dry sump and right now we are going to get started with the final assembly of it and make sure it all fits. So for uh, fitting everything together what we've done is we've cut these two shafts to their well final length and then uh, for this one this is one shaft that actually like gets press fit into the pump itself and usually how the Mercedes pump used to go was that this pump used to drive the other gear and this shaft was basically a shaft that like this gear pretty much floats on and what we've done is we've actually cut this shaft halfway so now what's going to happen is that half of this shaft is going to go into this gear and the other half is going to go on is going to be press fitted onto our shaft which is uh, then going to be driven from this gear so basically we're driving this shaft and we're driving this shaft uh, with the two gears and then these uh, lobe gears are just floating on the two shafts and they're not going to be making contact with each other only the two main gears uh, that are driving them are going to be making contact with each other uh, so yeah, let's quickly put it together and see how it all uh, works. Here's a look at the pump after it's finally all put together. We've put this rubber pipe on so that we can actually uh, spin it with the impact driver and test how the pump actually flows, but um, it's looking really cool. This is how all the stages move inside it. You can actually see them moving over there. Um, later on, we might add a screen over here so that the pump doesn't suck up any um, dirt that might be in the oil pan, but um, the gears actually do have bigger clearances than the uh, factory ones, so of course they, they wouldn't be susceptible to getting damaged if in case the pump also sucks in anything, but um, right now is the cool part, actually uh, testing the pump out and seeing how it actually flows. Uh, we're just going to be testing the scavenging stages because of course the main stage is going to flow just as it did with the well when it came from the factory. Uh, the only difference of course on the main stage that we've made now is that the inlet is over here rather than the inlet actually being at the bottom of the pump. Uh, and this one will of course be directly linked later on to the external tank that will be flowing oil to the main stage. Um, another difference, uh, the 
fuel pressure regulator that used to go on this part at the back of the pump doesn't go here anymore. We're actually going to put an external fuel pressure regulator that is going to go on the timing cover. Uh, the purpose of leaving it external is because, of course, if you want to make changes to your uh, oil pressure, you can do it externally. You don't need to take the oil pans off to do it anymore. Now for testing the gears, we decided to test them with water rather than oil because, well, the previous Mercedes pumps that we tested, they were just single stage um, scavenging pumps. That's why they did not flow that much. This one had three scavenging stages, so that's why its flow was three times as much as the Mercedes pump. So it would have made a massive mess in the shop if we tested it with oil. Holy crap, that flows a lot. That's it, we're out of, uh, that's all our limit. driver can manage. That's a lot of flow though. That's all coming out of this tiny little hole right now. Later on, we're gonna open up this hole. We're gonna make it bigger so that we can connect the fitting over there that is gonna flow all the oil to like an external tank. Uh, but yeah, looking pretty good so far. So now the pump is all pretty much assembled. We've also put the pulley on the front and uh, yeah, this is a look at everything after we tested it in water and the cool thing is you can't even see a mark on the aluminum lobes they're not even touching each other they get really close to each other but um, yeah they don't really touch that's why they don't wear out over time or anything so uh, now uh, the last step left is actually to uh, well not bolt it finally in the engine but just do a test fit in the engine see how it actually goes and after that well in the next video we're going to be making the um, oil pan for the bottom and uh, quite a few other things on the engine that we still need to do but um, yeah for now let's test it out. So here's how the oil pump finally goes inside the engine. Uh, we were just um, putting everything in place just to see how it lines up and everything and uh, we just had to cut this little bit of a part off the uh, upper oil pan where um, it wouldn't have gone in place properly if we didn't leave this hole so we're gonna have to TIG weld it and cover this up. Uh, other than that we still need to do a little bit of cutting on this uh, lower oil pan, upper oil pan anyways because we still need to make uh, an oil line that is going to be going from this uh, well that is going to be feeding to this inlet for the main pump um, and then yeah these scavenging stages go right here we have to make a pan for this part right now which is just going to be a flat pan it's not going to be too high up um, because talking about some of the benefits that this system will give us uh, well one benefit is of course that we're going to be able to mount the engine much lower down because we don't have this massive pan sitting over here that uh, keeps all the oil at the bottom but the bigger advantages are that uh, now all the oil is going to be stored in an external tank uh, which means that it's going to always get oil pressure when the car is going hard through the corners and everything um, it's also going to improve um, uh, windage losses because usually when there's a lot of oil sitting at the bottom of the engine and you take corners all that oil splashes around in the crankcase um, and the crank shaft basically has to spin through all that oil and everything and that not only foams up the oil but also uh, you lose power because of that so now because there is not going to be any oil that's sitting at the bottom of the engine um, all that is going to go away oil burning problems like um, i was having in that car after a few laps there's so much oil that pulls up in the heads that oil literally starts coming out of the valve covers uh, just because of that much oil accumulating in the heads just because it's a 90 degree v8 when you're cornering above 1g oil doesn't really flow down these galleries it goes up these galleries so really excited to see how this will perform now when the whole engine is put together and uh, working so yeah this is going to be everything for now in the next video we're going to be making the uh, cover at the bottom, um, finishing up on this whole system, connecting all the hoses and everything and also then starting work on the heads. That's pretty much going to be the last video before we actually uh, start putting this engine back together and uh, I'm really excited about that because it's a really cool uh, engine rebuild and hopefully we'll get a lot of power out of this one. Uh, but actually before that you guys are going to see quite a few videos. This is the uh, Mercedes SL that we were putting an M156 engine in, a C63 engine, and now you can see that the engine is finally, uh, well, kind of in place. We still need to do a little bit of work to make everything proper, but um, this coming along, you guys are going to see the video from this really soon. Also, another engine that, well, we ha are taking out of a car. This is a Bentley Continental GTC with a W12 by turbo engine. And it was in a bit of a front crash and there was a few things broken on the engine so we need to take the engine out entirely, inspect a few things on it and basically figure out a way to actually get this car running again. And uh, well other than this there's another car like that 
a lot of you guys have been asking about the manual swap e55 and you guys are also going to see the video from that really soon we have been working on it it's getting really close to the point where uh, everything is going to be done on it so yeah expect that video to be coming out really soon too so yeah that's going to be everything for now thanks for watching uh, we'll see you guys in the next one mm -hmm.